Um, can everyone see my slides? Yes, we can see your slides. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, um, I'll, let me see. Yeah, I'll start, yeah. Um, thank you very much for having me uh, to present at the Diabetes India uh, 2023. Uh, I'm very excited to have the opportunity to share our research through uh, this symposium. Uh, I'm assistant professor in the Department of Pharmaceutical Outcomes and Policy and at the University of Florida. So uh, the presentation title is I Smile. Individualized Intelligent Social Risk Management in Type 2 Diabetes Healthcare. Before the lecture, I'd like to disclose that uh, I received consulting fee from Pfizer outside the presentation and the, the relevant work. My research activities has been supported by several federal funding agencies in the US as well as the Farmer Foundation. Um, the story I'm going to tell today is about the development of a social risk management tool of type 2 diabetes named iSmile. The storyline includes why we develop iSmile, how we follow the health, um, learning health system cycle to build the data capacity, develop the machine learning models, and clinical interpretation of our model results, as well as public health implications of such a decision supporting tool. It has been very well documented that type 2 diabetes and its complications disproportionately affect racial and ethnic minority groups and the socioeconomic like, disadvantaged communities globally. We all know that uh, social determinants of health are conditions where people are born, live, learn, work, play, worship, and age. SDOH has been recognized as root causes of type 2 diabetes disparities. In fact, SDOH accounts for over 80% of modifiable factors that influence the health outcomes of persons with diabetes. As such, type 2 diabetes is a public health crisis globally that must be managed beyond traditional many, uh, medical care. We have to effectively, efficiently address patients' unmet social needs in order to improve health equity and health outcomes of millions of people living with diabetes. The importance of SDOH has been well well, very well recognized, uh, including WHO's uh, SDOH statement. Uh, currently, in the US, many hospitals and the practices have started incorporating social determinants of health service in their clinical workflow to screen for patients and met social needs. However, there has been an extremely low uptake of these existing social risk screening tools. According to data from several healthcare networks within the United States that have adopted SDOH service in their EHR system, the overall uptake rate was less than 2%. So why the uptake is that low? Uh, there have been many uh, data uh, infrastructure and personnel reasons. I think we may obtain some insights from the survey conducted by Physicians Foundation last year, 2022. Nearly all physicians indicated their patients' health outcomes affected at least one SDOH. Over 80% think the United States cannot improve health outcomes or reduce health care costs without addressing social determinants of health. Over 85% uh, of physicians think they have either limited time or insufficient work time, uh, workforce to address patients' social determinants of health that essential to their health outcomes and the health care access. Very strikingly, uh, strikingly 
um, more than half of the physicians reported social determinants of health challenges uh, cause the physicians themselves experience stress and frustration on their daily job. Overall, we identified two major challenges in incorporating social risk management into clinical care of type 2 diabetes. First, the existing screening tools are not automated, making them very difficult to adapt to the already very busy and overwhelmed clinical workflows. Um, second, there are very limited channels, as well as uncleared and conformed information on the means to help patients to address their social risks. Um, specifically, the evidence is limited and the mix regarding the effectiveness of social determinants of health targeted interventions in improving type 2 diabetes health outcomes as well as identified disparities. Our development of ISML is to address these challenges. We propose a structured approach to integrate social care into diabetes health care. So we believe upstream social determinants of health play a fundamental causal role that can shape downstream medical determinants of health and represent important opportunities for us to figure out innovative approach to improve not only health outcomes for individuals, but reducing the disparities of the population. As I mentioned earlier, we're following the learning health system framework um, listed three tasks. The first task or the first step is to uh, build data infrastructure. We integrate social determinants of health information into the existing EHR database, including both contextual level, SDOH, uh, like neighborhood depreciation, uh, working this uh, uh, ring space workability, as well as personal uh, person level social determinants of health, such as education, employment, uh, transportation, and the food access. The second step is to develop machine learning models. Uh, the first model we develop called polysocial risk war. We put together all the social determinants of health to um, use this polysocial, create a polysocial risk score, use this polysocial risk score to identify patients at high risk of adverse health outcomes, such as hospitalizations, diabetes complication outcomes. The second part of the uh, model is to estimate the causal effect of key social determinants of health in items on the adverse health outcomes. In this way, we can identify the effective intervention target. The third step is to put everything together into the ISML to design a platform uh, support clinical decision making. So um, our data is from UF Health EHR. It's one of the site of One Florida Plus Network. One Florida is part of a PCOR Night, uh, a national clinical database um, network in the US. So in one Florida currently, we have uh, 70 million residents uh, in Florida, 2 million in Georgia, and about uh, um, 10K, 10,000 in Alabama. Uh, the mainstream of the database is electronic health record. Uh, we do uh, different types of uh, data linkage, including claims data, Medicare, Medicaid, and some private payers' uh, claims data. Uh, we also linked with uh, immunization data, um, death index, and uh, other disease registry data. UF Health data is one of the 13 uh, data partners of One Florida Plus Network, is also the largest uh, data partner. This is the map of the state of Florida. So those blue dots. Uh, stands for the UF Health Health Net, uh, UF Health Health uh, Care System Network. 
So the first step is to build data structure uh, in order to incorporate a contextual level or neighborhood level factors, we conducted spatial temporal linkage of our external exoposome database to the EHR where the uh, patient's residential histories. So in our established exoposome database, we had um, factors documented social environment, built environment, and natural environment, a total of over 9,000 variables. So the second step of data uh, infrastructure building is to use natural language processing to extract the present level social determinants of health information from clinical notes in the EHR. In our current cohort of 11,000 patients, uh, we collected over 1.5 million cl clinical notes and used the uh, NLP pipeline to extract uh, social determinants of uh, health and uh, behavioral and the psychological determinants of health, including economic stabilities, education, um, healthcare access, as well as um, lifestyle related factors. Uh, such as smoking, alcohol, uh, stress, physical activities. We also now developing pipelines to extract uh, diabetes distress information from clinical notes. Um, so after extracting this information from clinical notes, we do the data harmonization with uh, structured data such as uh, SDOH modules and the Z code to uh, put together uh, generate person level SDOH information in the EHR. Our study population was patients diagnosed with type 2 diabetes between 2012 and uh, uh, 2020 in UF Health EHR data. The study outcome of this study um, is hospitalization in the one year follow up range. So we selected index data as a random outpatient visit encounter, uh, collect uh, both contextual and person level social determinants of health before the index date, use this information to predict the hospitalization one year after the index date. The first uh, model task is to develop a prediction model and generate polysocial risk score. We use XGBoost uh, by incorporating both uh, contextual level and person level social determinants of health and their interactions to identify patients at high social risk, essential to their uh, hospitalization risk. The second model task is making inf causal inference uh, to use a causal AM model. Um, we included double robust learning in the causal forest, estimate the counterfactual effect of key and actionable social determinants of health, identify potential intervention target. Results, uh, this is our results for the polysocial risk score. So uh, in our cohort, including 11,611 type 2 diabetes patients in UF Health EHR, um, our polysocial risk score achieved the C statistic 0 0.62 to 0.65, a reasonable prediction utility for predicting three months, six months, and one year hospitalization risk. Uh, we put the polysocial risk score in a multi-variable logistic regression. After adjusting for demographic and the clinical characteristics, the polysocial risk score explained 22%, 19%, and 36% uh, of increased risk for three months, six months, and one year hospitalization risk. That means by a uh, one year, the social risk explained about one third of the increased risk of hospitalization. Another two thirds were explained by clinical factors. 
So in this bar chart, the y, uh, the x axis is our polysocial risk score. We categorize in by dye cells, and the y axis was the actual hospitalization rate. In the top 1% of the polysocial risk score, the one-year hospitalization risk is six, uh, 36%, means one in three people would be hospitalized. Well, in the bottom of uh, five dye cells, the hospitalization rate was 10% lower. So these bar charts suggested a good calibra uh, calibration performance of our polysocial risk score. These are results from the causal estimation of SDOH effect. House instability was identified as a key risk factor contributing to hospitalization in polysocial risk score prediction model. We therefore estimated their heterogeneous counterfactual effect in association with hospitalization risk. The left graph shows patient stratification and heterogeneous effect across subgroups. Based on our model, patient result insurance would bear a higher risk of hospitalization caused by housing insecurity compared to patients with insurance. On the right side, it shows variation of individualized effect of housing instability on the hospitalization risk, which means if we put intervention targeting on approving people's housing condition would be more effective in some patients than others. So then we put everything together to um, make the iSmile platform. Um, here shows the initial, uh, initial user interface uh, for the SML prototype based on a real patient case, a female 53 years old, white Hispanic ethnicity. So with the polysocial risk score, um, the three months hospitalization risk is 92, uh, categorized into the high risk class. Then we further break down uh, the three months hospitalization risk, uh, identified two thirds were explained by clinical factors and one third were explained by social risks. So these are the top five uh, predictors generated from our polysocial risk score predicting, uh, predicting three months hospitalization risk. But we all know that the predictors do not necessarily act as causal risk factors. So we re-rank re these predictors based on their causal effect associated with hospitalization risk. Then the next step of iSmile is to develop the navigation system to help patients connect the available community uh, resource and the programs to improve their social conditions. Um, implications and take home message, iSmile information can be used to support the shared decision making between the care team and patients on personalized intervention strategies to manage patients' social risk. This project has established uh, the methodological framework and their generated reward evidence for effective social risk management in clinical care. We believe SML has the potential to improve health and health equity by integrating social care into healthcare delivery, leading to a paradigm shift in the US healthcare delivery. So this is our study team at UF. Uh, we have a multidisciplinary and very collaborative and supportive a team, including experts in data science, implementation science, uh, clinical diabetes, machine learning, NLP, and the health services research. So that's it. Thank you very much.